Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the channel, and today we're gonna get cranky because I've just found some interesting mechanisms known as cranks and sliders, which are not to be confused with cams and followers, which are these mechanisms right here that I built sometime last week, I think. I don't know, what is time anymore? It's hard to hard to keep track. So before I tell you what it is, let me just show you what I'm going to be building in this episode because I'm actually going to be building three different versions of a crank and slider. Here's number one. Here's number two. And here is number three. So now each of these three mechanisms come from a website called 507movements.com, which has actually more than three. Surprisingly, it has 507 different mechanical mechanisms. So shout out to Blue Flame for pointing me to this website because there's all kinds of fun stuff here. But these things are basically cranks and sliders and their job is to convert rotational motion into linear motion or vice versa like we have in combustion engines. Some of you may remember this video from the cam and follower episode where we looked at the cam and follower things up here which are actually responsible for moving these valves up and down which then allow the gases into the engine to then combust. And that combustion is actually what causes these sliders to go up and down then rotating these cranks so although they are very similar in their overall functionality when it comes to the conversion of rotational and linear motion um, they are actually working opposite of each other in this case these cams are converting rotation into linear at the follower and these sliders are converting linear into rotation at the crank so this is the first mechanism that, that i'm going to be trying to build in scry mechanic i'm pretty sure this isn't going to be that difficult to do so if i power this thing with the wheel we should be able to get a pretty good linear motion and then the second one is going to be a little bit different so the major difference with this mechanism is it's actually taking this consistent rotational motion and it is converting converting that into a variable speed up and down motion uh, over here. Because you may notice that this thing goes down very slowly and then it kind of shoots up and then it goes back down very slowly and then it kind of shoots up. But I think technically this wouldn't be considered linear because all of this is going up and down. It is actually rotating about this point just on a much wider scale. So then that brings us to our final one that we're going to be replicating, which is essentially the same thing as the second one, but it has this extra piece, piece attached to it right over here which is the slider. And this is essentially going to be doing the linear motion. It's kind of incomplete. I'm going to finish it down here on my own. But this is also a variable speed movement. You can see it goes up quickly and then it goes down slowly. And if we reverse it, we can have the opposite effect. So I'll leave a link to this website down in the description because there's literally 507 different things on here. And a lot of them are just not possible in Sky Mechanic, but a lot of them are pretty cool to see. If they're colored, that means that they have an animation to go along with them if they're black and white that means that this, it's just a picture so sorry about that i have no idea what this is supposed to do <laughs> but anyway back to this thing let's see if i can make this in scrap mechanic all right so conceptually this is actually pretty simple i'm going to take a similar strategy where i'm using suspension to give some resistance and also give it a way to be attached to uh the same creation all right i gave myself just enough room here so basically if i just build this out around this peg like this I think this, theoretically, this should work right here. I don't know why, but I gave it a fancy shape here that makes it kind of look like a face. <laughs> but uh, this should be it. So I've already hooked the engine up. So all we got to do is turn it on and let's see if it works. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's already perfect. It's so smooth too. Look how smooth that is. All right, here, let me weld it vertically as well like I did the other ones. There we go. Let's paint this black so we can really see the contrast here between the mechanism and the background. You know what? Let's paint the mechanism red. So this is obviously it goes up and down really smoothly. It goes up just as fast as it goes down. How fast can we make this thing go before it breaks? At some point, that pipe's just going to phase through existence here. Oh, boy. Oh, it's starting. It's starting. Oh, my... Inter okay, we're at max speed. I'm actually really surprised that this thing's able to handle this. I mean, the last couple notches didn't really make much of a difference because I think the resistance of the actual slider itself is, isn't allowing the engine to go up to its maximum potential, but it's working. And then if I was to slap a seat to this engine, lower the power a little bit, this would be another one of those instances where I could have very fine motor control over how far up and down I decide to let this thing go. 
And of course, it doesn't matter which way I turn the crank. I can go back and forth if I want to. Okay, mechanism one, accomplished. Functionally, this mechanism pretty much gives the same exact results as this cam and follower mechanism. So I could pretty much use that to create this exact same effect here. All right, but now we're gonna be moving on to this one, which is actually number 100 of the 507 mechanical movements. So this one is going to give us a different function than what we've had so far with this crank and the other cam and follower system. This is gonna give us a quick return crank motion. So it's really similar in its basic design. It's just, it's the same kind of thing here with the wheel with the pin in a slot, but the slider is gonna be different. And I actually don't even know if it's technically gonna be considered a slider at this point because it's also attached to a bearing and is gonna be rotating as well. But let's see how it goes. All right, so it starts off exactly the same here, but I now have this section over here, which also requires a bearing. And then I just gotta pretty much build this slot out to the other end of the wheel. And that should cover the distance. All right, and then I just extend this part out and that should do it. We should have a variable motion, like quick return crank here. Let's hook up the engine and see how it works. Okay, here it goes. Does this work the same way? Oh yeah, look at that. Let's move it a little bit faster. It's perfect. This is, this stuff, I'm really surprised. Like for some reason, I don't know why, be maybe just because I have so many hours in Scrap Mechanic and so many hours troubleshooting and trying to fix issues with creating mechanisms in this game. I just didn't expect this to be this easy. <laughs> These are actually really easy things to build in a scrap mechanic. Yeah, so this one's actually pretty cool because this kind of gives me flapping vibes, like a bird's wing, it like flaps down really fast and then comes up slower and flaps down fast. So here, if we just take two of these and put them opposite each other, we might be able to create that kind of effect. All right, check it out. Is that cool or what? Totally gives flapping vibes. Yeah, but this right here is not linear motion. Even though it goes up and down, it's technically just oscillating circular motion that doesn't finish a cycle. But it is rotating around this central point. But that brings us to the final one that I'm gonna be doing for this episode, which is going to be the most complicated of them all. And it pretty much starts off like this with this rotational system going out to another bearing, which then oscillates. And then that oscillation is then transferred onto a slider for a final result of actual linear motion. But uh, I'm gonna try to build it more like the picture. I could just technically build it off of this. I'm gonna try to stay true to the recreation here. All right, so this one actually is a little bit more complicated because unlike these ones over here, you may notice that this rotation point and this rotation point are in line with each other. But on, according to this diagram, the rotation point is actually misaligned. So instead of putting the pin right here, I'm actually gonna put the pin right there. This is gonna be interesting to see how this goes. And then I will put the rotation point right here instead. Yeah, this is gonna be really interesting. This is very different than what I've been doing as far as like aligning with the build grid and all that. I'm gonna give this one a little bit bigger of a buffer on either side just because I'm not as confident of the measurements here. So that right there should be good enough. And actually on this side, this needs to come out in this direction. It goes out 90 degrees. All right, before I build this any further, let me do a quick test just to make sure I'm on the right track. Oh, wow. This one seems to have a much bigger difference in its uh, variability of speed here. Like, look at that compared to... Here, these are these are going way faster. Let's have the engine speeds at the same exact engine speed so we can see the difference. All right, check it out. Actually, they're not as different as I thought they were as far as speed goes, huh? Oh, it's interesting to see. Okay, so now uh, this is gonna be the tougher part. I need to then attach another piece over here, which is then going to be essentially a slider. So we're gonna have to give it a slot to slide. So I'll go ahead and put a bearing right here, allowing it to rotate from that point. Man, I'm really gonna, this is a lot bigger of a mechanism. All right, so now we are building off the image here. I am making up my own stuff here based off of just other things I've seen before. And I'm gonna give this another rotation point here because this is gonna have to stay straight while this arm is going to be a little bit angled sometimes depending on the motion of this. So then this is gonna have a groove in which it should be able to slide. And this is what allows us to have a slider. All right, so I'm definitely gonna have to paint this up so we can distinguish the different moving parts here from each other, because otherwise everything just blends in together. Okay, I think it's ready for its initial test here. So we have the power coming from this rotation and that should translate through this entire mechanism to this end piece, which is the bright blue here. 
and this should essentially just be completely linear going straight up and down but faster in one direction than the other direction. So it's basically a combination of these two where this has completely linear motion, but it's the same speed in both directions. This has an oscillating rotational motion, but it is faster in one direction than the other. And then this is the best of both, completely linear and uh, variable speed. Here we go. I'm having it go really slow right now because I want to see how far this thing goes so I can keep building it out here actually you know what it's kind of nice that it peaks out a little bit like that because it's like it's actually it's getting somewhere but the rest of the i kind of want the rest of this to be contained you know is that where it goes to oh a little bit more than that actually i can't build out that far so it's gonna peak out just a little bit Boop. <laughs> all right let's bump up the speed a little bit here whoa Wow, oh man, that, that looks like a, it's like a jackhammer at this point. Look at that. It's really going down fast <laughs> compared to the upstroke. Oh no. Okay, this one definitely has some, some steeper limitations it appears. <laughs> That's not good. That's not how this is supposed to work. I mean, I guess this is what you should expect. More moving parts, more chances for failure, right? All right, let's go ahead and weld this up next to the other ones. Oh boy, I did not expect that to weld like that. So the cool thing about this one is it actually should be reversible. So right now the fast motion is the downstroke. So if you reverse the bearing, it should go the other way around. Or then the fast motion becomes the upstroke. The other way looked like it was a hammer. This way it just kind of looks like it's trying to grab a hot bowl from the microwave. Like, ooh, ooh that's hot. Yep. Ooh, no, a little bit still, still too hot. Oh, just cool it down a little bit. <laughs> so this one obviously isn't very stable, but did I try putting these ones up to max speed? Oh boy. Oh, okay. There the. What? I don't even know. Oh my god. They go back in sometimes. Can I. How cool would it be if I could actually catch them both as they go back in? Come on, get in there. Yeah, I did it. I did it. I got them both to go in, but now they're totally off, uh, off centered from each other. I fixed them. You know what, let's set these things up for a side-by-side -side comparison. I'll put the animation up right next to these things. I'm even gonna color them the same. Okay, all set. Side-by-side -side comparison. Mechanism number one. How's it looking? I might be a little bit biased here, but if I was giving myself a grade, I'd give myself an A on this one. Okay, mechanism number two. How are we looking? What grade do I get? You guys get to decide on this one. How about that? Leave some grades down in the comments below. I mean, if you were to ask me what grade I deserve, I, I think I would give myself an A on this one. All right, and this one's a little bit more complex and I had to take some creative liberties with it going off of the screen here. But uh, here we go, side by side. How's it looking? What do you guys think? Did I pass? Did I pass my engineering exam? Am I an engineer now? Can I go, can I go build planes or something? Am I gonna get hired by NASA now? Is that how it works? Build a couple mechanisms of scrap mechanic, get a NASA job. Well, I hope you enjoyed this non-engineers dive into crank and slider mechanisms for the first time. I had been like obscurely aware of their existence in the past, but never specifically knew what they were or what they were called. So I thought this would be a great way to learn about them and also build them and show that process for anyone else who may not have been aware as well. Uh, if you missed the Cam and Follower episode, definitely go check that out. That's where this thing came from. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. That's kind of where this episode is built off of. And that episode was also built off of the Geneva Drive mechanism episode, which did pretty well. So if you have any other mechanisms that you think would be possible and interesting to build in Scrap Mechanic or other games that I play, let me know down in the comments below. If you want to see more, you can check out the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrap Man, and I'll see you next time. Bye.